discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, I will try to show you a few points that we just discussed uh, before. For example, uh, as just an example, it's not a true case, if you have a lesion in the thalamus, I told you in the previous lecture that we don't trim our CTV to the cerebral peduncle. So where is the cerebral peduncle? The cerebral peduncle is, we all know it because there is a brain stem here, we, there is a brain, midbrain here. So the anterior part of the midbrain limb, this will be the cerebral peduncle. If you put your cursor at the cerebral peduncle and you go up, this will lead you to the thalamus. And if you look carefully in the coronal view, let's show you something in the coronal view. I will close everything. So if you put your cursor down to the cerebral peduncle now, okay, and then push your page up, you can see clearly that there is a white matter fibers connecting the cerebral peduncle because this cerebral peduncle is where the brain stem is attached to the hemisphere so the cerebral peduncle will connect you to the thalamus so if you have a lesion in the thalamus in this particular area it is easy for this lesion to go down to the cerebral peduncle so please when you put your CTV of two centimeter and we try to go or you go to your trimming process, please don't trim at the level of the cerebral peduncle. It's a very common site of relapse and a, we you may miss it if you go with what you used to do by just trimming the brain stem. So please don't trim your brain stem as, sorry, um, let me correct that. Uh, so cerebral peduncle CTV. So don't please don't try to trim the brain mid, the the brain stem as you used to do before. Now from now on the cerebral peduncle will be included. This is wrong. So the cerebral peduncle will be included in your CTV, please, and make sure it is properly. Uh, covered in your CTV. The question will come to you now. So how much should I should I give for this cerebral peduncle? So how much dose would you give to your cerebral peduncle? You can, if there is a disease that you are, have a fear of, I mean, you still can t give it to full dose. If you think that you, it's just a microscopic disease, what you can do, you can give it up to 54 gray. So what I usually say, if there is a disease there or there is a, a previous cut, there is a disease at the thalamus and very close to the cerebral peduncle, I, get, I take it to full dose and I explain it to the patient carefully. What also you can do, you can stop at 54 gray and respect that and ask the physicist to do it for you as a 54 gray. There is no harm of doing that, but just be careful and don't trim and you have to include it into part of your your, your uh, CTV. As we all know, we trim at the level of the tintorium, so this is a very simple thing to do, and the best way to see your, your tintorium cerebelli is to look at your uh, sagittal view, so that you know you, you, you exclude your tintorium from your uh, your CTV. I think this we all do. What we what I, what I want you to take care of as well is at the third ventricle there is what we call the anterior commissure and the posterior commissure. The anterior commissure part and the posterior commissure is a communicating fibers between the two cerebral hemispheres. So don't please trim your CTV at the third ventricle and be like this. So leave it if you have a tumor because there may be crossing uh, the tumor along the anterior commissure or posterior commissure. So please any communicating fibers between the two hemispheres, we don't trim. Splenium, corpus callosum at the level of the genu, we don't trim. For example, if you have a GTV at the frontal, this is just as a, again, it's just a few examples that I'm putting for you here, and you are going for the trim process and you want to, to trim the tinturium cerebelli. Please be careful and don't trim all down to the ventricle because here there is what we call it the genu of the, the corpus callosum. And these are fibers that you can or the tumor can cross. So if you trim, don't trim below the phallic cerebellar. Stop at the level of the phallic cerebellar. And this is best appreciated in the coronal view. For example, if I, I stop doing this and I look at it here, so you can see clearly where is your phallic cerebellar. And easily a trick that you can use as well. Whenever you reach the level of the lateral ventricle, if you see the lateral ventricle in your axial view, stop and think carefully. Most probably you are 
cutting through the corpuscle lotion. So please be careful when you draw at the axial view without looking at the coronal view. If you see in the axial view that the ventricle started to appear, then the corpus is there. And now you don't have to trim. You just trim at the level of the falx and you don't trim at the level of the corpus callosum. If you see the NRG and the, the ERTC, there is a difference between both. So the NRG, they put zero margin at the falx. The history say a half a centimeter margin at the falx. I would personally stop at zero margin at the falx if I don't have any fear that the tumor can cross to the opposite side. The other point here is as well is the ventricles. The trimming of the ventricles sometimes is, is overdoing things for me, I, I think. So be, be, be please careful. So for example, if this, this is a lesion here, let's close one of them because it's confusing to see both of them. So if you have something like this and you want to trim based on the NRG, you will trim the ventricles. I wouldn't do something like that, honestly. I would leave it because first, I don't want to compromise the coverage of the corpus. Second, I don't, I want the subependymal tissue to be included. So the EORTC saying that you take half a centimeter around the ventricles or a margin, I would prefer to take a margin or to leave it. So I wouldn't be very doing very sophisticated trimming kind of things because it's outside the clinical trial. I want my patient to be treated in a good way. So for example here, I, what I usually do is I just remove the one that on the opposite side, but I don't remove the one inside my target because it will be very difficult for to do it like kind of shaping things and doing something like that. I don't think it's practical. And at the end of the day, honestly, it will be covered. If you look at the dose distribution at the end of it, at the end of the day, it will be covered. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. And I usually give a margin uh, around the subependymal tissue if there is a tumor around around the ventricle. But you don't have to do that. If you want to stick to the guidelines, you can do that. But personally, I wouldn't. And both are valid because we have the URC and we have the the uh, we have the NRG uh, guidance. So you what, use whatever you want to to use. Denturium cerebelli, falx cerebelli. Don't forget about the corpus callosum. Don't forget that there is a splenium as well for the corpus callosum. Don't forget that there is a third anterior commissure, posterior commissure at the level of the third ventricle that we don't uh, trim. The last thing I want you to be aware of, or just maybe a useful point, that if your PTV will be at the three centimeter, please don't trim your CTV while in the bone. Don't trim on the normal window. If you want to trim the bone, you can do it automatically, which is if you have the brain drawn automatically, then auto controlling or the auto segmentation, then you can easily uh, ask the your physicist to do it for you. But if you are going to do it manually, so please go to the, the bone window, go to the bone window and then trim. Don't trim at the normal window, because if you if you don't do that and if your PTV is uh, three millimeters, so it's a, I wouldn't make any difference actually if this is five mm, but if it is three mm, that's uh, like some centers as we were in the Royal Marston, they we use the three mm. So if you use a three mm, one mm will be outside already. So we are talking about a two mm PTV because the if you tri if you if you didn't uh, do it on a bone window, then your your you will not be uh, very accurate in terms of, of the trimming. You will end up by trimming like something like that, and you may miss part of the, uh, the meninges based on the, the window difference. If you change the window, then you can appreciate what I'm talking about in these particular areas. As I said, 5 mm PTV will cover it properly, but 3 mm PTV, I would be a bit cautious. So better if you want to trim to the bone, better to trim it on the bone window, not on the normal brain window. So be careful with, uh, with that. And um, this is a very quick uh, review. I, I don't have to do like a full case because brain is usually easy and uh, it's of uh, 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 straightforward in general. But just a few points that I found that uh, important to stress at and I hope you will find it useful in your um, uh, neuro oncology uh, rotation. And please, if you have any question, put it in the comment or you can also send me uh, on my email. Thank you.